Well, welcome, everybody. I don't usually do these big sessions. I like the smaller ones, so this will be new for me. Um, so we're here to talk about connected care, and the question that I'm really presenting to the crowd is, can data integrated across a continuum of care change personal and population health outcomes? We know there's a tremendous amount of hurdles to making this happen. Um, we've talked about several of them through the, through the last couple of days, between user adoption, uh, reimbursements, connectivity, licensing. Um, so this is a very interesting spectrum to be in. So what do we mean by all this connected care talk? So the premise we have is if you're collecting personal health data from say like activity trackers, blood pressure monitoring, how that data could move through your primary care into the, an acute event that may happen, and then the follow-up and education that happens post after you've been through this. So we really broke this down into four areas, and again, this is, there could be a tremendous more number of spots along this continuum. We kind of, we look at this as a kiosk and wearables, how it moves into primary care. So with the kiosks and the wearables, it's the trackers, the Fitbits, it's going to the, the right aids and doing your blood pressure cuff and that information being shared. Primary care, direct to consumer apps, personal EMR numbers, how that would go into pre-hospital assessment, telemedicine, ICUs, and then the follow-up care and what that means to us. So I pose a thought exercise here. How would healthcare change with centralized information available and was easily accessible? I'd venture to say it would change a lot. Um, so we will move into the scenario for today. So let's set up the story that we're here to talk about that this whole discussion is going to be about. So the premise is we can completely, what would completely integrated healthcare data look like if it was accessible for patients? So our story is Dave Everyman, and if you guys have walked past, and we've had a lot of fun with the gentleman with the stand-up characters out front. Um, we even took him to the bar last night, if some of you guys <laughs> seen him, so he was the most interesting man in telemedicine, and I would venture to say, <laughs> in a low bandwidth environment, he always gets an HD connection, so. Um, um, but he's, he's been healthy his whole life. Um, He's starting to think about the consequences and what it means to him. And so he starts to collect some of this health data and things on himself. Dave considers changing the several, changes with several good friends um, that have had heart attacks. And he's really starting to look at his personal health. He's getting concerned about it. So with kiosks and wearables, um, health kiosks and wearables data collection, this data can be centralized, in a, centralized into a database that can be review, review, reviewed personally or by your healthcare provider. So that opens up two opportunities. One, you could self-identify that you have a trend coming, or two, your healthcare provider may get an alert that says, hey, something's going on, and contact the patient. It would be a very interesting fold into, into medicine. Um, healthcare per portal and account BP data. So this is what we're referring to as going to like the Rite Aids, the CVSs, going to those kiosks every couple of weeks, having that data collected and it ends up somewhere. Um, right now it's in a silo, but if it was shared, your primary care physician could see it, it would really change things. Research and, or, uh, research and scheduling, so concerned with outcome data, Dave makes a DTC appointment at his primary care physician. So DTC, direct to consumer, he's got an app, the American Wells of the world, so he's connected with his healthcare physician in a, in a way that we've never been before. So we move to that primary care piece. Um, we have EMR kiosks, apps, PCP evaluations, so they check in. Apps link him directly to his healthcare exchange. He's got a, a robust data set that has followed him into his primary care office. Um, unique medical identifier, so he has a personal medical record that's available anywhere he goes that's easy to pull up. Um, the PCP is able to view that blood pressure data, so all of a sudden he has a history of what's been going on with the person and can see trends. We saw that with the Fitbit data where they actually identified a, an event in the person's life and, were, and they changed their outcome here in, in the last couple of days. Um, patient education and self-monitoring, so Dave's told by his PCP to monitor his blood pressure at home, and then his PCP is actually able to see that data and see what's happening with the patient. Acute event, so urgent care event direct to consumer. So Dave's on a vacation, he's away from home, he starts to not feel very well, he reaches out to his direct to consumer or primary care physician and says, hey, not feeling good. The, direct to, the DTC physician is able to identify an ED in that local area that he can go to. Um, the, the ambulance comes to pick up the patient. They're sending data to the hospital prior to the patient getting there, so they're able to cut down time as they move into the ED um, and just really speed up the care. 
um, acute monitoring until ICU. So the patient's at this small hospital in some rural area where he's on vacation. Do they move him to, a, to an academic medical center or an urban medical facility? Can he stay there in that environment? Um, by doing a, tele, a teleconsult, they're able to keep him there at that small hospital and they don't have to have the high cost of the transport to the urban medical center. He's placed in the ICU. They don't have intensive assessment at the hospital locally. It's reviewed somewhere remotely at a NOC. Um, and then they identify what needs to happen with the patient and communicate with the local facility. But all this keeps that patient there and reduces cost and time. And then last, after this, after this care has happened, what happens with follow-up care? So discharge, before the patient's discharged, they're able to set up an appointment through their DTC app with their primary care physician. Um, the integration of the health exchange, the patient's national information ID, will ensure this documentation follows him wherever he goes from that point forward. He's able to communicate with his physicians through a secure uh, messaging system. Maybe it's the American Well app. It could be several other things. Video on demand. The resources that are available and easily accessible now for post and follow-up care are tremendous. You know, at UVA, we do several different projects where we actually record for like diabetic care, record these videos, make them available for folks. It's a tremendous library of resources available, but if Dave had access to information as he leaves, he could be a very well-informed patient. And then nutrition and education via video or apps. So he basically has people following up with him after he's left the hospital, making sure he's following the orders that have been his discharge orders. So it could really change the dynamic of how healthcare is provided to people. So we're just trying to set up here for these folks to have a discussion along this continuum. So hopefully we'll have some great, great conversation. Thank you. Great.